you, friends, once again. We come to our session. Your host is none other than Mr. Spotter Fred. Now, we are looking at uh, a revision question in respect to the past paper, that is 28 May on uh, 2015. We are talking about Advanced FM, May 2015. We want to look at question one. Now, in advance FM, that's a question, a uh, past paper that was done in um, less than two seats ago. Uh, we are talking about question one. Question one A, evaluate four limitations of the Altman's z call model for predicting corporate failure. Now, there are many limitations, not only just four. There are many other limitations of Altman's z call. Remember, Altman, this is Professor Edward, came up with a model of, uh, of predicting the failure of a company. That's, you know, if uh, the Zest call was maybe w less than 1.8, that the, the, the bankruptcy of that company was likely. If it's between 1.8 and 2.8, somewhere there, then you know that's a gray area. You could not say or you could not really predict but above 3.0, then Altman say that the, uh, the, the bankruptcy is not at all likely. The uh, bankruptcy, I mean, Altman mainly used ratios, used various ratios, x1, x2, x3, and x4, not forgetting x5. So he came up with ratios of determining the z score of uh, a company for determining failure or for determining or predicting the likelihood that that company will fail in the near future. That's not our business at the moment because we have discussed Altman's Zest call in detail in our previous sessions when we were looking at uh, the content of the syllabus of advanced financial management in our website. Now, what we're interested in is to answer this question as a revision question. What are the limitations? Or what are the assumptions that he must have used that uh, in the real world or in the real practical do not apply? Now, one of them, one, variables are selected for their productive performance, not from the underlying theory. Also, the variables exhibit considerable sample dependence. Number two, samples were not random or distribution problems. That is, samples were matched for industry and size to control for these variables. However, this contravenes one of the basic assumptions of discriminant analysis. Three, no cost function for type one and type two errors. This will be useful to assess the performance of the model. Four, definition of what constitutes a failed firm is dubious. Altman uses firms whose credit ratings are suspect. Th five, variables in the model are of accounting nature, which assumes that they have information content about stock returns that is conditional across varying stages of the business cycle. Seven, the model also uses an adjusted accounting data that changes in market values of non-current assets are not taken into account. Those are the main items or limitations of Altman's z call. Now, we look at question 1b. Chuma Limited is, a considering is considering replacing a machine. The existing machine was bought three years ago at a price of 50 million. The machine is expected to have a useful life of five years. Uh, we, uh, five more years, that is, with no scrap value at the end of its useful life. The machine could be disposed of immediately at 35 million shillings. The new machine will cost 8 million shillings with a useful life of five years and an expected terminal value of 5 million. With the introduction of the new machine, sales are expected to increase by 25 million shillings per annum over the next five years. The contribution margin is expected to be 40% and the corporate tax rate is 30%. The operation of the new machine will also require an immediate investment of 8 million 
in working capital, installation cost of the new machine will amount to six million. Depreciation is to be provided for on a straight for on a straight line basis. The company cost of capital is twelve percent required. Advise the management of Chuma Limited on whether to replace the machine or not. That's twelve marks. Now, friends, you realize that in this question we are simply evaluating whether we are replacing. This is a replacement kind of investment decision. Do we replace or we don't replace? We have the old machine and we want to make a decision whether to bring in a new machine and do away with the old machine. Now, one thing you need to remember, once we buy a new machine, we are not going to retain the old machine. We have to sell the old machine. So the amount we are likely to realize from the sale uh, of the old machine will reduce our initial cost because at that point in time, we are going to bring in the new machine, we'll sell the old machine. So it means we'll reduce our initial cost by the, all, by the cash process for the old machine. Now, if the NPV or the net present value of this replacement will be more than zero or will be positive, then we say we replace. If the NPV of this replacement will be less than zero or negative, then we do not replace. This means that we have several steps that we are going to undertake. Step number one, we need to determine the initial cost. Step number two, we need to determine the, the, the incremental uh, depreciation. What will be the incremental depreciation? We compare the depreciation of the old machine and the new machine. Three, we need to determine the, the, the salvage. You know, we need to determine the terminal benefits. The terminal benefits which will uh, either have a release of working capital and it will also have uh, maybe the salvage value. So the, we need to determine the, 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 the terminal benefits. Then four, we need to determine the annual cash flows, the annual savings. What will be the annual savings are we going to have the moment we replace? Then we need to determine the present value or rather the net present value. That's the last step whereby we'll take into account the annual savings, we discount them using the present value interest factor of an annuity. We also add the present value of the terminal benefits, which will be discounted. The terminal benefits will be discounted using the present value interest factor. Then we subtract the initial cost to determine the NPV. That's simply what we are going to do. Okay, here we go. We realize that if you go to uh, uh, part B, we have been told that uh, it was bought three years ago. The old machine was bought three years ago for 50 million. The machine is expected to have a useful life of five years, more years, with no scrap value. There is no scrap value. So it means if you're going to calculate depreciation, we simply take 50 million divided by five years, and that's all. Or we can just say 50 million divided by eight years. For the last three years, we determine the depreciation for the previous three years. So what we do here, let's go directly and deal with this. We start with the step one. Step one, we are talking about now B. Step one, we determine the initial, the initial outlay. We determine the initial outlay. Now, initial outlay here will have the purchase costs. Purchase costs of new machine. These figures, I believe, uh, we are going to use millions. Yeah, let's use millions. Or I use thousands. Let me use thousands here, friends. Purchase cost of the new machine. We also need to bring in the installation. After you have added that, that will become our effective depreciable cost of the new machine. Then we are going to add release 
uh, uh, working capital working capital requirement we are going to less cash proceeds on sale of all machine because once we replace we bring in a new machine we have to sell the old machine so that's what we are going to do then we are going to either add or less tax tax shield if it's a tax shield on on uh, on uh, on loss we add sorry if it's on loss we if it's on uh, gain we add if it's on loss we subtract gain or loss on sell that's what we're going to do so we are going to take the no, we take the book value, net book value of the old machine. We we less the cash proceeds. We are going to do that. Then later we come to this, you know, uh, tax shield. Tax shield is definitely tax rate. We take the tax rate to multiply the qualifying expense. Let me start from there. What is our purchase cost of the new machine? We have been told that the new machine will cost 8 million. Let me say 8,000. Installation cost, we have been told that it will be installed. We were told in, uh, an, in addition information, the, 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 you know, the third paragraph, the last sentence, Installation cost of the new machine will amount to six million. So the effective is eight six million. If the installation was no, they are fine. Our effective cost will be eight million. Working capital requirement. We've been told that um, the last uh, uh, the 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 you know the last sentence. We have also been told the last paragraph. Sorry, the sorry the third the second paragraph. We have also been told. The second sentence, the operation of the new machine will also require an immediate investment of eight million. So eight million. The cash process, we have been told that we are expecting to sell the old machine. We are expecting to sell the old machine 35 million. That it can be disposed immediately at 35 million. Now we come and now determine the book value. Book value of this, we are going to take the 50 million. We subtract uh, these 50 million over eight years. For how many years? For three years. I could have saved enough space here, friends. Come and say, it's just 50 million. That is 50 over 8 years times 3. How much will that be? I'm using the inner column, friends. 50 divided by 8. Because we don't have salvage value with this one, we could have said 50 minus salvage value, but we don't have salvage value. So we just say 50 divided by 8 years. So you say 50 divided by 8 by 3. That's 18.75. So 50 million. Minus 18.7, that's that 1.25. What is the cash process? The cash process is 35 million. Now, if you less that, you realize that there's a gain. It will be a gain of how much? It will be a gain of uh, 3.75 million. So tax shield, in this case, we are going to add, you know, it's a gain. So you take 30%. We have been told the tax rate is 30%. Don't forget that. No, 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 no. We have been told 40% is the contribution margin. So 30%. 30% of that 750, how much is that coming to? So 30%, we are getting 11,250. Mm. 11,250. 11,25. So I'll 
Get the initial cost. What is our initial cost? Our initial cost, friends, now comes to, you take 86,000, 86,000, you add the 8,000, you subtract 35,000, you add 1125. Then I'm looking at 86,000 plus 8,000 minus 35,000 plus 1125. So I'm getting 6125. Our initial cost, friends, is 6125, and that's how it has come by. Step number two. We determine, we determine incremental depreciation expense and uh, depreciation tax shield benefit. So what are we doing now? We are saying...